All right, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna go over Lewis asset and basis as well as practice problems. Now first, we're gonna go over a few things first. So number one is thank you so much for the support. We're over 260 subscribers and I'm also getting comments, which is great. So please, if you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe and leave a comment this time. <laughs> so I wanna be honest with you guys. It took me about five to six hours just to create this video. It's not because it's a lot of content, rather it is tricky to explain what Lewis Asin bases are. It's not that I don't know what's going on. I'm, I promise I'm qualified to teach this and I know exactly what is going on. But I can assure you, you may be a little stumped on Lewis Asin and bases. You're probably like, wait a second, this looks exactly like Bronson and Lowry. I don't understand the difference. They look like the same thing. And you actually would be correct. They are similar in so many ways. I remember learning this in organic chemistry class. This is years ago. And when we went over Lewis, Lewis acid bases, actually I learned this in chemistry first. I remember going over Lewis acid bases. I'm like, I still don't understand the difference between this and Bronson and Lowry. They look the same thing. I don't know what's going on. And I, maybe you're in this exact same place as I was many years ago. All my classmates were lost. They were texting me. Do you understand the difference between Lewis and Bronsted? Because I don't. And I'll be like, honestly, they look like the same thing. But it is not until I did a lot of practice problems later and I realized, oh my God, there is a difference. You just gotta really understand it and look at it at a different point of view. And that's the point of view I'm gonna try to give you. So it took me five to six hours because I tried to create the easiest definition humanly possible for Lewis Asin basis. I'm, I'm gonna be honest, there are a bunch of YouTube videos out there on Lewis Asin basis and none of them tell a good definition. There's not a single one I've actually found. Even textbooks, I went through three or four different textbooks, I remember, none of them had good definitions on what Lewis Asin bases are. They still overcomplicated things. So I made this video to make it as easy and simple as ever. Like I wrote my own definitions to what Lewis Asin bases are and it works with all the practice problems. So let's begin. A few videos ago, we learned about Bronson and Lowry and their theory. So please go watch that video first because Lewis Asin bases actually build off of Bronson and Lowry. Now think about this. Sometimes the Bronson and Lowry mechanism does not work. What happens if an acid has no protons to give? Because Bronson and Lowry stated that the acid donates protons. But what happens if an acid actually doesn't have any protons? There are acids in this world that don't have protons to them. They're still acids. Just because they don't have protons doesn't, you know, does not make them acids. They're still acids. So that's where Bronson and Lowry were like, they're kind of stumped. They're like, wait a second, our mechanism, mechanism does not work if the acid doesn't have protons. So then comes Gilbert to Lewis, who created the term Lewis acid and bases. And on the right here is Gilbert Lewis. So what is it and how does it work? And how does it differ from Bronson and Lowry? Here are the two mechanisms. So let's go over Bronson and Lowry really quickly first. Bronson and Lowry said the acid donates a proton and they also said the base accepts the proton. So here we have a base. The lone pair goes after the proton of the acid and the acid willingly gives up the proton and we form two different molecules, the conjugate base and the conjugate acid. If you need a refresher to what all this is, please watch my Bronson and Lowry video. I also did practice problems. Now what Lewis was saying is that what happens if there's no protons in the acid, in the acidic molecule? What happens if there's no protons? What are we gonna do? So he was viewing it from a different perspective. Instead of you know, donating and accepting protons, what about we look at it as electrons? Let's look at electrons as currency. So he was like saying, okay, let me call the Lewis acid the molecule that actually accepts the protons and the Lewis base donates the electrons. Sorry, did I say Lewis acid accepts 
protons. No, sorry, Lewis acid accepts electrons. Lewis base donates electrons. So here we have our base. Looks very similar. The protons go and attack the central molecule here, which is boron. And the boron is accepting the electrons. And we create one molecule from this. So I know if you're still confused, don't worry about it. We still got two more slides where I'm going to go over the definitions and make it easier to understand. Here, I'm just pointing out the overall mechanism here. It's okay if you don't understand it. We got practice problems. We got so much stuff to, co you know, to go over. So don't even worry about it. Don't even stress. So in other words, here's what's going on. Bronson and Lowry said that the lone pair of electrons from the base will attack the proton on the acid. So same as before, this bronson lowry mechanism. The covalent, bomb, sorry, the covalent bond would form between the base and the proton. The outcome, we got two products, the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. So same old bronson lowry nothing changed here. Now Lewis comes along and said, I agree with you, but what happens if the acid has no protons? Right? They don't have any protons to give. What, what are we going to do? So he's like, your entire mechanism revolves around pro protons moving. Here's what I think is going on. If there is a proton available on the acid, the proton accepts the electrons from the base. If there are no protons on the acid, the electrons from the base will target the most electron deficient atom and form a covalent bond. So that's exactly what's going on here. Boron is the most electron deficient molecule. So the, what's going to happen is the electrons are going to target the boron because it's the most electron deficient molecule or atom. And we're going to combine both molecules into one. Nothing about protons moving. Nothing. We combine both molecules. That's all that's happening. We combine both molecules. Instead of having two molecules, at the end of, you know, like Bronson Lowry, we're only ending with one. We're merging the two molecules. We should be looking at electrons as currency. The Lewis acid accepts the electrons and the Lewis base donates the electrons. So here's Lewis. I made a meme. Hold my beer, Bronson, so that I can do it better. <laughs> Now, here's a very common fill-in-the-blank question on the midterm. All Bronson acid, all Bronson acid and bases can be considered Lewis acids and bases, but not all Lewis acid and bases are Bronson acids and bases. Because Lewis molecules can have either protons or no, uh, no protons, Bronson molecules must have protons. And I'm going to go over it. Don't worry about it. So let's go over a little bit more, basically, the mechanism or the options we have here to solve these problems. Now, we call this the rules of engagement. That's what I'm calling it. We have three options, three scenarios that can happen with Lewis acid bases. So let's go over the first two. If a proton is present in the Lewis acid, the molecule with no lone pairs. So let's first, actually, before you even do that, let's go over what a Lewis acid and Lewis base is. How do you identify it? Here is the shortcut. You have two molecules in question. So let's look at A here. You have two molecules in question. The one without any lone pairs. So there's, this is the one without lone pairs because obviously there are lone pairs here. The one without lone pairs is the Lewis acid. That's the, that's the trick right here. That's the one without lone pairs is the Lewis acid. The one with the lone pairs is the Lewis base. That's the ultra shortcut. Okay. So if a proton is present in the Lewis acid, so the one with the protons, if there is a proton there, a hydrogen, we have two options. Option one, 99% of the time, the proton in the Lewis acid will accept the, pro will accept the electrons. So this is the same thing as the Bronsted and Lowry mechanism. The exact same thing. Nothing has changed. All Lewis just said is that 
the proton is going to accept the electrons. He just basically refined bronson lowry mechanism a little bit more. He basically just said how it's going to work. Nothing, nothing's changing. Nothing with solving the actual equation has changed. Same thing, same exact deal with bronson lowry We solve it the exact same way. There is a second option, which is very rare, but I'm going to go over it just in case if it's on the test. If the Lewis acid contains an atom that is very electron deficient, aka not having a full octet, the base will avoid the proton and target the electron deficient atom instead with its lone pair. Please note this is a very rare scenario. And here's the trick. Anytime you see the molecule BH3, use this option. Otherwise, just use option one. And in this variation, only one molecule will be created. With option one, there's going to be two molecules because it's a normal bronson lowry mechanism. Now, if there is no protons available on the Lewis acid, so just like this, no protons at all on the Lewis acid, execute option two from above. You have no choice because there are no protons, so there's nothing you can do. This creates one molecule, the reagents bond together. So we're going to do exactly like this. The electrons will target the most electron deficient molecule or atom, which is boron, and we fuse the both molecules together. They're covalently bonded and we create one molecule. So realistically, you only really need to know option one and this bottom option because this hardly ever shows up. This is only if there's, you know, there's a chance it could be actually on an exam just to fool you, which is very, it can very well happen. So just know the scenario. Anytime you see BH3, use this option. Otherwise, 99.999% of the time, use option one. It's rather like a, you know, regular bronson lowry mechanism or use the second option here down below. If there's no proton available, merge the molecules together. That's it. So once again, if there's a proton available, we're going to do normal bronson lowry mechanism, split the molecules in half. Not split them in half, but we're going to end with two molecules. The product side will have two molecules. If there are no protons available, merge both molecules together. Merge the reagents together. So let's do some practice problems. So I purposely did the BH3 one here first. So notice we have BH3. So we're going to use option two right here. The base will avoid the proton and target the electron deficient atom instead with its lone pairs. One molecule will be created. So let's do that. This is the Lewis acid. This is the base because the base has the protons. So let's write that in. Uh, Lewis base. Lewis acid. So the electrons are going to avoid the proton and target the boron. When this happens, we create one molecule. They are now merged together. All right, so now boron has an extra bond with THF. We merge the molecules together. That's it. So B, this is, this right here is the Lewis acid. And this is the Lewis base because the base has the electrons. There are no electrons visible on this molecule. So it's the, by default, the Lewis acid. And since we have no protons here, we're going to execute this bottom option here where we're going to create one molecule by merging the two molecules together. So let's do that. We target the electron deficient molecule, which is usually most of the time the center molecule. That's the trick. It's always usually the center molecule. And we do that and we are going to create one molecule. We just combine them both. Simple, right? Okay, what about this one? You don't see any electrons. It's because I didn't write them in. I didn't draw them in on purpose. This oxygen has no available electrons. Here we do. 
Now notice, we do have protons. Right? We do have hydrogens here. One, you know, one, two, and three, right? We have, we have them here. So this is the Lewis acid first, and this is the Lewis base. So since we have protons here, we have protons in this molecule, the Lewis acid has protons, we're going to execute option one. Proton in the Lewis acid will accept the electrons, a.k.a. the bronson lowry mechanism. So let's do that. The proton is going to accept the electrons. It's like a currency. The proton is going to accept them. So the proton's like, hey, come on in. Right? It's going to tell the electrons, hey, come on in. I, want, I, I don't mind. I'll, I'll accept your money. The bond gets destroyed. And it's normal bronson lowry mechanism like that. The hydrogen has now been transferred to the, rid the first molecule here, which is like right here. And we lose a hydrogen because we did that. And we have H2O here. Here, what do we do? What is the Lewis acid and which is the Lewis base? Okay. The one with the electrons drawn in is the Lewis base and this is the Lewis acid. So, we're going to execute the bottom option here because we have no hydrogens, so no protons available. So, we use this one only option one here. This, uh, the, for the, there's only one option, right, under no protons available. So, we're going to create one molecule. So, let's do that. We attack the center molecule, just like usual. That's the most electron deficient. And then we create this. All right, let's do this one. Oh, we got protons here. So once again, first, let's draw in the protons. Let's draw the electrons, sorry. So we got one here, one here, and like that. Nothing on the other molecule. So by default, this is the Lewis base, and this is the Lewis acid because there are no electrons. So we have protons available on the Lewis acid. So execute option one. The proton in the Lewis acid will accept the electrons. So normal bronson lowry mechanism. So let's do that. Electrons will target one of the protons, doesn't matter which one. Break the bond. And we get two molecules, the conjugate acid base. Just to clarify, the hydrogen has now moved on to here, which is this. And then we are only left with H2O on this side. Okay, what about this one? Well, immediately you should know this is the Lewis base because we have electrons. This one has no electrons available, so this is automatically the Lewis acid. Now the Lewis acid has no protons at all. So no protons. We execute the bottom option here. If no protons, protons available, we're going to merge both molecules together. The base will attack the center molecule, the center atom. So, da, 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 attack, because boron is the most electron deficient. And by electron deficient, just think about it as the center molecule. Easy as that. And we are going to combine both molecules, just like the rule state. Ta-da! And there we go. That's it for Lewis acid and bases. Hopefully I made this easy. Much easier than your textbooks or your professors or any lectures you ever watch or YouTube videos. And if you did, please like and subscribe. And until next time, later.